Uh, you're a rock star here at the fair. Everybody loves to see you. Uh, I, everybody's coming by making the eye contact and they say, I'm voting for you. I saw a guy with 20 bags of popcorn come out, I'm voting for you. Uh, there's a big straw poll tomorrow in Ames. Uh, you, the, the, your reputation is that you have the most loyal followers. Your your people are the most committed uh, to you. It's not uh, because they uh, think that your hair looked on nice or that you had the best one-liner. They love your policy and they're willing to marshal their forces to go do it. I know you don't make predictions, but how do you think the straw poll is going to go tomorrow? Well, I think we're going to do well. I think we're going to do better than we did four years ago. If we don't do better than four years ago, it'll be a big disappointment to me. What would you do four years ago? We, I think it was fifth. Okay. But it will be a disappointment to me, not in a personal way, as much as it would be a disappointment that I haven't you know, delivered this message, which I think is the answer to so many of our problems. And it's a popular message. Young people love this message. So if we backtrack, that'll be a disappointment. But so far, we don't see signs of that. I mean, it seems like the momentum keeps building and building, even in between the two elections. Uh, you know, this campaign for liberty has gone, been ongoing. And when I go to the campuses, it, I mean, they're just uh, very, very much alert to this. And they have a lot at stake. Young people have a lot at stake because they're inheriting a system that they won't provide jobs but a lot of obligations. And, and they're tired of the wars. And they love my, uh, my emphasis on trying to put freedom back into one package. You know, personal liberties are not different than economic liberties. But we've divided that up. We have some people, well, we'll protect your right to do these personal things, but we want to tell you how to spend your money. And I think young people, for some reason, their minds haven't been clogged by the status quo <laughs> and the government and all this well, education. The old, political, the old political rubric that, that developed 40 and 50 years ago that separated those two things. I think you're right. When you talk to young people, uh, the libertarian idea, lowercase l, libertarian idea about unity and freedom is more popular. It is on college campuses. People are talking about it. But the other thing I notice is, four years ago, uh, Rudy Giuliani and others in the field made whacking you in debates their number one thing. That was like that was the way that people would try and get an applause line and go after you on foreign policy. Four years have passed. The Republican Party's come a long way in your direction. And now they're in a hurry to agree with you, especially on fiscal policy, monetary policy. They say, oh, obviously. Uh, and you, in some ways, are sort of a grandfather of the Tea Party. You were there before that was happening. Movement came up. Do you think that this is a sustainable direction for the Republican Party inside the GOP? Can it keep moving in that direction? If they want to, if they want to continue to grow. <laughs> <laughs> and they, you know, interestingly enough, I think we are having an influence in the party. But the conventional, traditional Republican leaders that have been around a while, they, they want to grow the party, but they never come and ask me and say, how do you get young people interested in the party? They've never done that. But that's what they have to do. They have to appeal to the young people. And I think most politicians are flexible enough that they just understood, understand it. But there is a strong resistance by many in this country, and it's not just Republicans, that we can disengage ourselves militarily from the world. And I'm not talking about an isolationist position. I want to trade with people and talk with people and be friends with people, but to bring our troops home and save this money, that's a bipartisan support. You know, we haven't, uh, even though the party out of power usually argues the case that we have to come to our senses, then when they get in power, they do the same thing. But I think you could argue that on entitlement system, too. Republicans get in and they get control. we got to cut back, and then they double the size of the Department of Education. And that's what, that inconsistency and that flip-flopping is what people are getting tired of, and, and, and certainly the young people see the inconsistency. You